I welcome you all for today's lecture on crippling load. Today we are going to solve the tutorial problem to find out crippling load for a column which is subjected to the following condition. Let me read the problem. A solid round bar 3 meter long and 5 centimeter in diameter is used as a thread. Determine the crippling load when the strut is used with the following conditions. The first condition is both ends of the strut are hinged. The second one is one end is fixed and the other end is free. And the third one is both ends are fixed. The last one is one end is fixed and the other end is hinged. The Young's modulus of the material is considered as 200 giga Pascal. So here a column which is otherwise called as strut is subjected to the following conditions. So under these four conditions we are going to calculate the crippling load which is applied on the column. Now let us write the given data. The first one is the length of the column that is 3 meter and is 3000 mm. And the second one is the diameter of the column which is 5 centimeter. So we have to convert that into mm that is 50 mm. And the next one is the Young's modulus of the material which one is 200 giga Pascal. We know that 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. So here it is giga. Giga means is equal to 10 to the power 9. So, 200 multiplied by for this giga, we have put 10 to the power 9 and 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. So, this one is 200 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. Since we consider all those values in millimeter, we have to convert this also into millimeter unit that means Newton per mm square. So what we do is here 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm. So in order to convert that into Newton per mm square what we need to do is you have to divide that it by 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm that is 10 power 3 and power square and this one meter square so here it is square we need to provide so this value is 10 to the power 6 so 10 to the power 6 here it is 10 to the power 9 so here the end result value is 10 to the power 3 because it is 6 it is 9 so here if you take it that it is 10 power 6 if we cancel that one it will become 3 so we have converted this giga pascal into newton per mm square. We have to maintain the same unit for all the properties of that given data. So, in order to find out the crippling load, first we need to find out the moment of inertia of the cross section. So, here it is a uh, circular cross section because the diameter value is given. So, the Moment of inertia for a circular cross section is 5 by 64 d power 4. So, already we know what is the d value it is that is 50 mm. So, by substituting this value, you can calculate the moment of inertia of the circular cross section of the column which is provided, and that value is 30.68 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 mm power 4. The unit of moment of inertia is either meter power 4 or centimeter power 4 or millimeter power 4. Here we have substituted all those values in mm. So we got that value as mm power 4. Okay. Now let us see how to calculate the crippling load for various conditions. The first condition is when both ends of this thread is hinged. Okay. So here the column both ends are hinged. So this is the uh, 
column which we consider for analysis. Here you can see at point A and B represents both the ends of the column or we can call that a strat. So here you see that support is hinged to support at both the ends and the load is applied here. Okay. So if both the ends of the strat are hinged then the equivalent length value will be equal to length of the column. So initially in the problem the length of the column is given for this condition the equivalent length is considered as the, the length of the column the same length of the column because we need to know the equivalent length for the different condition of the support then only we can calculate the crippling load because here we are going to see what is the formula for calculating the crippling load and this is the formula for finding the crippling load for all those conditions. Only thing which gets varied here is the equivalent length. For this arrangement, that means when both ends are hinged, then the LE value is equal to length of this track, that is 3000 mm. Okay. So, in this formula, we are going to substitute E value, I value, and LE value. So, after substituting that value, we can get the crippling load as 67,288 Newton. So, here we have to notice for this condition, that means for both ends are changed, the LE value is considered as the length of the column which is provided. So, LE value is straight away taken as 3000 mm for this condition. Okay. So, now we are going to see the second condition where one end is fixed and the other end is let free. So in this column you can see that one end is fixed and the other end is free. So for this condition we are going to find out the crippling load. So now you see the equivalent length value is changed because here since one end is fixed and another end is free the equivalent length of this column to find out the crippling load is twice that of the length of the column. That means LE is equal to 2L. So, this is the LE value. So, L value is 3000 mm. So, 2 times L means 2 multiplied by 3000 which is equal to 6000 mm. So, this is the equivalent length for this condition. That is one end is fixed and the other end is free. Now let us find out the crippling load. The formula remains same to find out the crippling load. The only thing which gets vary here is the equivalent length because this condition LE is considered as twice the length of the column. So it is 6000 mm. After substituting this value, we have calculated this crippling load for the condition one end is fixed and the other end is free of the column. So, the crippling load is 16,822 Newton. Now, let us see how to calculate the crippling load for the third condition. That means both the ends of the column are fixed. So, this is the given column or the strat in which we fix both the end that is A and B are fixed and we apply the load here that is at this point. So, here the equivalent length is of the length of the column. Okay. So, the length of the column is L. So, when the beam is subjected to buckling because of this load P, the equivalent length is considered as of the length of the column. First, L E is equal to L by 2. So, which is equal to 1500 mm because the L value is 3000. So, 3000 divided by 2 is 1500 mm. Next, we will calculate the crippling load for the condition where both ends of the column are fixed. So, the formula remains same. The only thing is LE value has changed here. So, we have substituted this value and the crippling load for the condition where both ends of the column are fixed is 2,69,152 Newton. 
Now let us apply the fourth condition where one end is fixed and the other end is hinged. So here you see the diagram where one end that means the bottom end B is fixed and this end A is hinged. The load is applied here and the column is subjected to buckling. So the equivalent length of this condition is LE is equal to L over root of 2. So first let us calculate the equivalent length for this condition. So LE is equal to L by root 2. So L value we know that that is 3000 mm. So by substituting the L value here we can calculate the equivalent length for the condition where one end is fixed and the other end is hinged. So LE value is equal to 2,121.3 mm. Now we are going to calculate the crippling load. The formula remains same. Only thing is we have to substitute the LE value for the condition. What we consider here. So after substituting those value, we got the crippling load as 1,34,576 Newton. In this problem, we have seen how to calculate the crippling load when the column is subjected to four different boundary conditions. We also applied the same formula to calculate the crippling load for the four different conditions. The only thing is the LE value gets varied for every boundary condition. Thank you for watching the lecture.